After falling heels over head and lust while making an X-rated movie titled Natural Porn Killers, Jason Andrews and Amanda Logue team up to start their own little mom and pop porn business in Tampa, Florida. They started working doing clips for sale. Making sex videos and selling them on the internet. And uh, she started responding to ads online. One of those ads was posted by Dennis Scooter Abrahamson. Scooter had an ad on Craigslist advertising for girls to come to his house and massage him. And she had responded on several occasions and performed massages for him. And she would often do more, for more money of course, just like most of the other young women who responded to Scooter's ads. What he told me was, I'm not paying for their company, I'm paying for the privilege of them leaving in the morning and never talking to me again. Scooter's best buddy, Maynard Binshuttle, says the sexy massages were like a hobby to him. That's why he kept his massage table in the living room. And it was no secret, not even to the cops, who knew Scooter well. I actually had met him, oh geez, I guess early 90s when I was working in road patrol. Scooter was a tow truck driver, Detective Lisa Shuneman, often encountered at the scene of car accidents. I always had a laugh, always talked to me, always took the time to smile. Scooter was a lovable rogue who also rode motorcycles, hung with other bikers, and owned a popular tattoo shop. Everybody knew Scooter. He was a big personality. He was a big guy. Big old teddy bear. For the people he loved and the people he cared about, he would do anything for him. He really would. Detective Sergeant William Lindsay knew Scooter well, too. Always hung out at strip clubs. He surrounded himself with people that lived that type of lifestyle. The only bars he'd like to go to is where the girls were working. Scooter would be smitten with them. He definitely loved ladies. A good flirt, not a rude person to women. Um, treated women decent. And Maynard says he and his wife, Lisa, were actually at a strip club with Scooter late one night when his pal got a surprise text from Amanda Logue. The text was, what are you up to? I'm horny. Who is this? And he goes, she's a porn star. He said, well, why don't you meet me up at the house? Maynard says he warned Scooter he should be careful. And he goes, oh no, and he's going on about how beautiful she was and she's a sweet girl and yada, yada, yada. So they head back to Scooter's house to wait for Amanda. I think as soon as his hormones started to flow, his judgment lapsed immensely. Maynard and wife Lisa relax in the hot tub. Scooter stayed in the house because we didn't have any clothes up. Scooter's respectful. He could be the rudest man on earth if you didn't know him, but very respectful if you're his friend. Then Amanda arrives. She walked out and, oh, don't worry about it. I don't mind nudity. And she stripped her clothes off. And the first thing she did is proposition my wife. Now you look back on things and wonder, well, why did she do that? Why why did she say this? Kind of makes you wonder if, if there was ulterior motives to why she was doing what she was doing, other than, you know, trying to get rid of us. Maynard and Lisa moved to the swimming pool to get away from her. And I look over at the hot tub and her and Scooter in the hot tub clearly having sex. But what bothers Maynard is that Amanda is texting at the same time. Then she gets out of the hot tub, she's texting. He's like, what on earth does she keep texting for? So she goes in the house with Scooter, and I looked over and see her phone sitting there on her towel. He was going to grab the phone and take a look at it. And I said, Lisa, something's not right. She goes, you're paranoid. I told him, don't do it. Don't invade her privacy like that. But if Maynard had looked at Amanda's phone, his pal Scooter might still be alive. Well, she would have now. <laughs> because Maynard would have seen that Amanda had been exchanging texts with Jason about how they would kill Scooter as soon as he and Lisa left to go home. That probably would have changed a lot of things. Next, police uncover those shocking texts after Scooter is found savagely stabbed and bludgeoned to death on his beloved massage table. He had a huge hole in the back of his head. There was blood spatter on all the walls, on the ceiling fan, on the mantle of the fireplace. The blood spatter off of the end of the murder weapon was strung up on the roof. He had a huge hole in the back of his head. There was blood spatter on all the walls, on the ceiling fan, on the mantle of the fireplace. 